Hello, my name is Lucas Mann, and I pastor the Spring Church in Lawrence, South Carolina, probably about 45 minutes from here. And I come here this morning to share with you the gospel of grace, uh, the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, also to plead with you concerning your soul, concerning your eternal state, and to plead with you concerning the specific sin of murder, pleading with you that you would not murder your child, but that you would abstain from this and you would embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. You young women and young men, that you men ought to man up and protect your woman, protect your child's life from this horrible end. I come out here to plead with you that you would glorify God by embracing Christ, by coming to Christ, and thereby giving God the, the glory that is rightly due unto Him for what He has done in His Son. For Christ has come into the world to save sinners, as Romans 10, 4 says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone who believes. And ultimately out here, I, I do, I'm out here this morning to bring God the glory. To bring God the glory in the preaching of the gospel of His Son. To bring praise to His name as His gospel goes forth. And I even offer myself to help you on a practical level. My church, I commit myself and my people to help you if you choose life. There are people waiting to adopt your child if you so desire to do that. We'll help you in any way we can. I'm not out here simply to to care for your soul, but also to care for your physical state if you choose to do righteousness, if you choose to do rightly. So may God be honored, may God be praised as the gospel goes forth as salvation is offered. Salvation in Christ alone. The text of Scripture that I would like to point out this morning before you is found in Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, in verse 4, very simple. It's a very simple passage. Paul is writing here under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he says these words, Now to the one who works, his wage is not credited as a favor, but as what is due. Now this passage speaks to the absurdity of salvation by works. The absurdity of salvation by works. Because in the greater context, Paul is speaking on salvation. And he says, basically, using this, uh, this idea of work as an example, as an illustration, we might say, of salvation, if you work for something, it's not credited to you as a favor, but as what is, what is due. See, we ask ourselves, when we look at Scripture, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. We see that we are commanded in Scripture to praise God for saving sinners. But how does God do this? Does He do it with the cooperation of the sinner or by His own might and power? We know from Scripture that He does it by His own power for His own glory. And therefore it is absurd to conceive of salvation as by work. Otherwise there would be no reason to give God the glory. Or if we were to give Him glory, it would only be, well, God, thanks for helping me accomplish salvation for myself. But no, we are exhorted to give God the glory for giving us salvation all by His grace. And that's what I want to make known this morning to you very briefly. Concerning the absurdity of, of salvation by works. But before I do that, of course, as I said a moment ago, the context here of this chapter, chapter 3, and even chapter 5 talks about it, the next chapter, is about salvation, how God saves sinners. And Paul has labored, he has labored to make known to the reader that it is by grace, it is by grace, it is by grace, received by faith. Verse 24 of Romans 3, it says, Sinners are being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 28 of chapter 3, For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Romans 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. Grace upon grace. And so here in Romans 4.4, 4, 
he uses very simple logic to show us the absurdity of salvation by works. That's what I want to look at. He says in verse 4, Now to the one who works, his wage is not credited as a favor. In other words, for the man who works hard, for example, let's say at his job, if he labors and toils, if he sweats, doing what he is paid to do, when he receives his payment for his work, it's not as if it was a gift, or as if it was a favor, or as if it was grace. It was what was due unto him. So likewise, if salvation was by any part of human merit, if salvation is by your work or mine, then there is no reason for us to ascribe to God glory in it. For we did something. We offered to God something. And Christ's death upon the cross is now needless. There was no point to it. For if man has inherent goodness, then he can pull himself up by his own bootstraps to God. He needs not Christ. But nonetheless, we know that Paul here is just simply pointing out the absurdity of such a foolish thought that salvation could ever be brought about by human work. For he continues, For his wage is not counted as a favor, but as what is due. It's counted as, as what is due to them. It would not be regarded as a gift from God, but we know that what is the book of Ephesians tells in Ephesians 2, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. It's clear from Scripture, and even from Romans 3.24, as I said earlier, that salvation is by grace. And if it was by works, there would be no reason for man to praise God or to ascribe Him glory. And if He did, it would only be, we might say, half of what God truly deserves. But if salvation were by works, God it would only be owed half the glory. But nonetheless, God is jealous. God is jealous, my friends. Jealous for His own glory and His own praise and exaltation. And therefore, He has so ordered salvation to be all of grace, to be of free grace, to be of unmerited favor, so that He might be glorified in it. So that He might receive all the praise so that he might receive all the worship. The God of glory is a holy God. A holy God. We know from the book of, um, of, of Leviticus that God is a holy God. We know from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 6, God is a holy God. He is righteous. Yes, he is gracious and compassionate. But we must not forget his holiness. And in God's holiness, in his perfection, in his justice, he gave his law. He gave His Ten Commandments. You shall not lie. You shall not steal. You shall not blaspheme. And you yourselves and me, we have, we have broken the law of God. We have lied and stolen and blasphemed. We have committed adultery. And you say, no, I have not. I have not committed adultery. I have not done that sin. Jesus said in Matthew 5, if you look at someone with lust, then you commit adultery with them in your heart. God sees the mind, friends. He sees the heart and He sees that it is perverse, that it is desperately wicked, that it is evil. That the heart of man is horribly corrupt. Even your words, my friends, the, the cursing language that you employ, it is noticed by God. Jesus said, in Matthew 12, 36, But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for in it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Friends, friends, listen, I say this because I care for you. I truly care for you. I care for that child in your womb. That that child will not be killed. I'm using the law of God to, pl to, to pluck at your conscience. That you might re repent and believe in the gospel. That you might get out of this place. God sees all the things you say, all the thoughts you think. And certainly He takes notice of the sin of abortion, the sin of murder. And therefore, 
We are all condemned to hell, myself included, by default. The place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. The place of outer darkness. Hopeless is man outside of the grace of God. But my friends, God is rich in mercy. He is rich in mercy. He accomplishes salvation by His own power. It's not by man's strength. We just see, I just said that man is condemned. He cannot offer up to God righteousness. He is filthy. He is covered in the filth of sin. Salvation is of the grace of God. God is rich in mercy. He chose a people to Himself before the world was made that He would save them in Christ. He commissioned His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for this poor, miserable lot. And Christ agreed. So when the right time came, Jesus came and fulfilled the law for His people, lived obediently as we ourselves could not. See, God requires of you and I perfect law-keeping, but can we provide it? No. So Jesus fulfills the law and then dies upon the cross as the Lamb of God. He bears the wrath of God against us in our sin. He takes ownership of the sins of the people of God and takes upon Himself the wrath due unto them. As it clearly says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And so when Christ died, the wrath of the Father was satisfied. Three days later, Jesus was raised from the dead. He is alive today and forevermore. And 40 days later, He was exalted in glory at the right hand of the Father, at the right hand of the Majesty on high. And that's where He sits now. And the call of the Gospel to you, my friend, to you, O oh, abortive mother, is to repent and believe it. The call of the Gospel is that you repent and believe it. You must flee your sin. You must turn from your sin. That is what repentance is. And believe the promises of God as they are revealed in Christ. And God will pardon you of all sin, past, present, and future, because of the work of Christ. And He will wrap you in the garments of His Son's righteousness. He will treat you as righteous because Christ fulfilled all righteousness for you if you were His. Do you see that exchange? Friends, I've, I offer this to you. I beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Salvation is all of the grace of God, not by your works. The essence of repentance and faith is, is abandoning self-righteousness, abandoning works righteousness. And believing the gospel of grace. And you will be saved by grace. And for those who are saved, they have a new nature, a new heart with new desires. They no longer live in blatant sin as they did. See, if you claim to be a Christian, but you don't bear fruit of it, you're, con you're, you're, con you're, you're completely deceived, self-deceived, my friends. True Christians bear the fruit of it. And they don't bear the fruit so that they might be saved. They bear the fruit because they've been saved. We're not saved because of our works. Our works validate the fact that we have been saved, that our hearts have been changed. As 1 John 2 says, verse 3, By this we know that we have come to know Him, if we keep His commandments. The one who says, I have come to know Him and does not keep His commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps His word in him, the love of God, has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in Him. The one who says He abides in Him, on Himself to walk in the same manner as He walked. Do you walk as Jesus walked? If not, you're lost and you need to be saved. If so, praise be to God. And the, the call of the Gospel to the believer is to rest in it. To rest upon it. To abide in it. And to go and proclaim it to the lost world. So do that, my brethren. Do that by God's grace.
all by grace, unmerited favor. Why? So that God might receive the glory. That is why. That God might receive the praise and honor. As He said to the prophet Isaiah, My glory I will not give to another. It is all to the glory of God. And therefore Paul says, at the end of Romans in chapter 11, in verse 33, he says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and unfathomable His ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who became His counselor? Or who has first given to Him that it might be paid back to Him again? For from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be the glory forever. Amen. Indeed, to God be the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. You lost people. You lost souls. Repent. Repent. How you ask, how do I repent? Flee your sin. Let go of it. Do not murder your children. Do not fornicate. Do not idolize things. Do not be materialistic. And believe the gospel so that the love of God might be shed abroad in your hearts that you yourselves might be the children of God, soldiers of the cross of Christ. Friends, and I call you that because I care for you. Believe the gospel of Christ. You who say that you know Christ, I exhort you to examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith, to see whether you know Christ. Truly, truly, my friends. And if you see that you do not repent and believe the gospel, it's the same call, it's the same command. But if so, praise be to God, my brethren. Share this gospel. Proclaim this gospel. Live upon this gospel. It is the daily gospel. So we have seen here in Romans chapter 4, verse 4, that salvation by work is utterly absurd. It is all of grace. We have considered that God is holy and righteous and just, perfect in all His ways, that He is a righteous God. That He is loving, abounding in loving kindness. Yes, even toward the wicked He shows a measure of grace and love. But let them not trample that underfoot. Rather, let that move them. Let that move you to repent. So God in His holiness gave His law, but we broke it. We trampled it underfoot. We are liars, thieves, deserving hell. But God, being rich in mercy, chose a people to Himself whom He would save. and sent His Son into the world to save them. And Christ died for their sins and was buried and was raised on the third day. And for all who repent and believe on Him, their sins are forgiven and they are wrapped in His righteousness and they are saved. They are saved by grace. They have a new nature, new hearts, new desires, new inclinations. All by His grace. All by His grace. All for His glory. To God be the glory in all things forevermore. Amen and amen.